Welcome to Monday Club. We're back again. Tonight we have Bundelicious in the house. Yo. Um, Dave Osavo in the house. Our standing guest as always. Um, tonight we're talking about the DNO fuse. To pull or not to pull? Who wants to kick this off? A quick message from our latest sponsor, Life Audio. Now, they are looking for registered installers around the country. Head over uh, and send an email to lithaudio at cwagencies.london. It's a great way of upselling your customer, adding value to your jobs, um, and you get a free t-shirt uh, once you become a registered installer. You get some stickers, and it's a great product to be associated with. Head over to cwagencies.london. All the techno babble and all the links will be in the show notes. Go and check it out. That's what she said. Sorry. Um, <clears throat> I am greatly under the impression we are not allowed to pull it by the Western Power Man years ago that came and told me off and gave me a slap on the wrist. I've been doing it, what, two years? Been told by all the sparks I worked with for, yeah, we could it, we're allowed to, we're allowed to do it with safe isolation, we're allowed to do this, that, and the other, to then get a phone call off. Oh, there was a fuse board change, and then two weeks later, he went and had his meter read, and uh, the guy was like, uh, oh, have you had a fuse board change recently? Yeah, 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 the customer, no, yeah, I have, yeah. All right, who did it? Oh, Nick, Nick did it, yeah, yeah, yeah. Did he, did he pull the main fuse? Yeah, he did, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, brilliant. So I got a phone call from Western Power and saying, we don't have any proof or evidence that you've done it. Um, if we catch you doing it, you'll get fined, blah, 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 blah. I was like, well, at wet behind the ears of doing it not long, I knew no better. And from ever since, I have never done it hand on heart since. I've always made sure we're doing a board change. We have means of isolation with a isolator. It ends up just costing the, uh, a customer a lot more money. That's all it ends up being. Dave? You see, now this is one of those things that's been discussed ad nauseum and is a known problem out in the world that no one ever seems to do a damn thing about. And why, for goodness sake? We obviously, as electricians, have a right under EOWR to safely isolate the consumer's equipment, which is your, your tails coming out your meter onwards. So, uh, when you can I just point a, you to the exact regulation? Um, 12 uh, dash 1 dash B. Um, yeah, and, it, and basically what that means is you could be in breach if you don't pull the main fl fuse of EAWR um, 12 dash 1 dash B. Well, I'll take your so that contradicts itself. It's, it's, it's so annoying, especially to the young lads coming in the trades now, watching what we're doing. There is no clinker answer. There should be meters, and I know there's new few ones that come with isolators built in, smart meters that we can turn it off, blah, blah, blah. But why can we not, as qualified electricians, just take a little day course to go on to do self -iso safe isolation, pulling the fuse out, making sure we've got the blank cartridges to insert? It makes no sense why we're not allowed to do it. This is it. It could be a money spinner for the DNOs on their courses and stuff. If you can demonstrate competence on some course that they've forced you to spend 250 quid to attend for a day and you can demonstrate that you have the PPE, the requisite PPE to do it, then, uh, and, but also to understand when you shouldn't be doing it, when you should be calling in there because you're looking at a head that's so degraded or defunct or whatever that you think, okay, I, I know I, I know how to pull the fuse, but I don't want to physically touch that or it, you get somewhere the fuses are sort of seized in there and you, you can't get them out anyway. Uh, to be able to to know, to be trained to know uh, what to do in that circumstance, which obviously go to the DNO. I, I don't know why they don't just coin it in and accept defeat on it, because the whole thing is uh, pretty ridiculous. Yeah. And uh, I, as I've said before in other videos, I used to get a, a local company out to do it, who um, a company called Haste, who would charge a reasonable amount to come and um, pull a fuse for you. And then... Uh, uh, I think I got them into trouble by saying on YouTube or Twitter or whatever, actually saying, oh, use this company here. They're great because some asshole uh, piped up in my comments saying, oh, he shouldn't be doing this. They're not supposed to be taking orders from electricians on where they can pull fuses. Only the, the customer or the DNO can can get haste to do this on their behalf as a subcontractor. Mm -hmm. And uh, they came down like a ton of 
well, shit on top of Hayes who were forced to pull the service. And now Western Power want 218 quid for the equivalent, which, you know, when you're trying to compete with someone who doesn't care and is just going to do it anyway, to go along to your customer and say, well, I can do your consuming exchange for you, but it's going to cost you this extra amount of money unless you can sweet talk your either your smart meter installer if they're begging you to get a smart meter or your supplier to come and do it for free or for much less then uh, you're pricing yourself out of the market yep. but as i say i have a right to be able to isolate that stuff and the dnl aren't doing anything they're not building isolators into meters or service heads so uh, you're kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place you either oh. I bet no one's the ever job been nicked or through. get naughty. Well, I don't know. And I, I, I spoke to Western Power about this as well. And I, I spoke to a guy who, who said, look, if we catch you doing it, you're in trouble. And I said, well, <laughs> except that. You know what? I did one just today. <laughs> nice new SPS board went on just today. Uh, and I fitted an isolator uh, and I pulled the main fuse to, to do that. Um, I'm not going to say what territory I was in. <laughs> it wasn't mm. necessarily Most- Western Powers. But uh, like I say, I've got a right to to make that equipment safe, to do the legitimate job. It's not like I'm trying to cheat the meter here. I'm not trying to to tamper with anything in a way that's uh, illegal in terms of what I'm trying to do with it. I'm trying to provide a legitimate service for my customer uh, on their equipment. And I ought to be able to do that without having to arrange for the DNO to come in and charge a couple hundred quid for the privilege of... Uh, turning off the juice. 20 minutes. Mm. Do you know what, though? So I've done my research, and big shout out to Vulcan Electrical on YouTube. Uh, I've watched this video <laughs> in length of my research. Um, so getting it isolated, there's no universal procedure across all the DNOs on how long it takes and uh, who can and what can and all the bits and pieces, all the questions that we have. There's no universal procedure in place um and actually some dnos if you phone up and tell them you're going to pull it they don't mind also the new smart meters you, there's a good chance that if you pull it they'll some send someone around to the house to make sure like to the see what power's gonna... off around here yeah, if it's this off is it, more yeah. than 30 minutes they think it's a power shortage so they'll go and check it yeah yeah and smart. you know what i, I can't, almost relish them turning up when i'm on site because i'll have my fucking camera with me and I'll uh, I'll be arguing the toss with everybody. But most of their engineers, to be fair to them, they they know what you're you're up against and what it's like. And, and half the time, uh, if you uh, we've had people out from Western Power before to do a legitimate pull, and they're like, "Oh, why didn't you just pull the fuse, mate?" <laughs> because Sorry. I'm in a position that your company is putting me in. Yeah. It's 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 difficult, and it, and I don't know why it never gets addressed. It's on the list, the ever growing list of stupid fucking things that never seem to get addressed that we every day face in the real world. They know it's a problem. Why don't they just do something about it? Why don't they just legitimize it as Nick says, by throwing a little course. They would make so much money because if they said to me, even if it was 500 quid course, go and do this. This will then cover you for the next five years. Take my money yeah, so I can fucking... do it safely and I can do board changes quicker and cheaper for customers. Absolutely. I'm up for that. Absolutely. And when you're doing it as a legitimate business for legitimate purposes on customer equipment that isn't their equipment, just to just to stop yourself from getting killed while you while you're undertaking that job. Yeah, brilliant. I'm 100 quid. I'll take that. Yeah. Mm. Um, I'll buy the PPE from which I've already got, of course. So we'll... We've uh, got... Because you get guys going, oh, well, I, I just take the tails out live and, and stick no. them into my eyes or whatever. And you're like, well, you know, one day, one day you're going to slip, one slip and you, you're going to hit something. I'm not blaming that. You're going to hit that's, the line in the neutral. Or you're going to hit yourself. That's such a big bang as well. That's so yeah, yeah, yeah. And all you've got between you and the, the garage ceiling that you're going to fly into is, uh, well, that, uh, that supplier's fuse at 60 to 100 amps. And, uh, well, it ain't going to no, do I'm... much for you. I'm terrified. I'm actually terrified of towels. I'm really, I'm terrified of towels. I don't know why I have a legit fear of towels. <laughs> but listen, there might be salvation coming down the pipeline. So I just happen to know these things, you know. Um, there's a recent change proposal to the distribution connection and use of system agreement or the DC USA. 
they are looking at creating some sort of universal rule about speeding up the process. Um, to me, it sounds like wishful thinking, but I've actually got what they're proposing. Um, bear with me. It depend, depends on whether this is something new. I believe it when I see it. I mean, I joined mm. NAPIT 10 years ago, originally, oh. from when I see And they even then, they were saying, yes, we're working hard with the DNOs to be able to get legitimate electricians to be able to pull fuses. Nothing's changed in the last decade. Maybe something will in the next, but... Yeah, I've heard the same thing years ago. But to be fair, anyone listening or watching, if you have any experience, if you've ever been caught doing it, and repercussions, let us know below. Or anyone from Western Power or any people like that who is job to can't fit isolators, please let us know the procedures below because I'd be interested because it's only ever hearsay that we hear. Oh, my mate got got done for pulling the fuse down the pub. But like, do you know what I mean? It's never, I've never met someone who's a spark that I trust that go, yeah, this happened to me. Well, frustratingly, my isolator got taken out in my house when the smart meter got put in. So I had a means of isolation and now I don't. It's like, oh, wow. fucking cheers. Because I had one of the Siemens isolators, uh, Siemens meters that has the isolator built in. Yeah, That was a good idea. They were fitting them 20 years ago. And now we're back to these smart meters that you can't, you know. There's I feel no like you lot are nicking my glory. All the research I've done for half an hour before this show. <laughs> you watch someone on YouTube, you asshole. <laughs> <laughs> but listen, here is what is being proposed. Go on. Setting up dedicated numbers with colleagues who know what is required when the removal and replacement of a service cutout fuse is requested so the process can be, can be completed quickly and effectively. Two, establishing a monitoring procedure to determine whether the electricity providers are offering appointment dates within 10 business days and penalties to be imposed if they do not. And three, or C, the introduction of procedure for the removal and replacement of service cutout fuses by competent, qualified, and regularly assessed electrical. I can't big, read the rest. Big words, uh, yeah. Yeah, electrical people. You're oh. welcome for my knowledge. I honestly didn't listen to anything you just said. When Sam talks like that, and I know he's reading, I just completely face. I wasn't reading; it's from my memory. Oh, sorry. Yes. So yeah, yeah. And it's, it all depends, of course, on how quickly they react and how much they charge. It's all very well saying, "Yeah, well, we can be there next working day," but if they're going to charge two hundred quid for it, then I'm still going to be fucking pulling the fuses. I, I never used to pull the fuses; I used to get haste out. But since Western Power have have made it an unreasonable option to to go to them, well, I kind of figure, yeah. fuck them. If it was 50 quid, I could understand people. I wouldn't say to people, you don't have an excuse now to pull the fuse. Like 50 quid, organize yourself better. That's what I would say. You know, it's easy. But the real world situation where around my area, it's 250 quid plus the VAT. Like, it's a lot of money. So every time I quit a board change, I have to put that on top. And I've lost quite a few because other sparks around the area will just pull the fuse. They will fit a dual um, RCB, LCD board. I'm doing RCBO. 18th edition with surge fuse box board with the isolator on top and it's i'm coming out seven well including the let's say including western power i'm 800 quid plus the var yeah this is the when, trouble you you yeah. get to a point where consumer unit changes are for the rich and the poor yeah. well they can stick to their 60 or the edition. people that don't have a choice or, if they're having an extension 30, 36 boards or whatever yeah it's just it's just madness and, and if afdd's come in and they meant to well you, you nobody <laughs> Doing legitimate I won't be fitting changes. I can't no, know. Be you put down as deviations on uh, on your on your certificate. Customer can't afford it. No, in fact, it was rare that when the originally when the surges came out because I remember fitting a few boards when I first started YouTube. And I was like, oh, "Where's the surge? Where's the surge?" I was like, "Well, it hadn't really taken off then." We've done your calculations. We was like, "Well." For, to my knowledge, you don't really need it in domestic situations. It's mainly just commercial and industrial. What's up, Sam? You're rolling your eyes. Well, you, you kind of do and you kind of don't. Well, so, you do and you don't. Where I'm built up, the, where the substation is, you I actually don't wasn't need rolling my eyes at you, by the way. I was rolling my eyes at my foot, but it's fine. At your foot? What's wrong with your foot? It's really itchy. And oh, yeah, no one cares. Let's get back to this. Um, <laughs> got him then. Um, but yeah, I, I, I when surges became in the boards that we were buying, we just included the price. It's the pennies, really. It's only, I think, when you get a Hager board and you want to add a surge to it, you're looking an extra 40, 50 quid, aren't you, Dave? Yeah, well, I hope what Hager price themselves out of the market for me a long time ago. Uh, yeah, I'm not just, fit to... just madness. Just yeah. madness. I mean, you, why spend... Uh, they're, they're everywhere, of course. It's easy to get hold of the stuff, but why spend that kind of money when the likes of Fusebox are available from... Who is your go-to um, Fusebox provider at the moment? Who, me? Yeah. 
SBS. No, I mean Fusebolt. Brand. 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 Yeah. yeah, SBS. Oh, that's the split. Uh, that's the two the, two bus bars, isn't it? The dual bus bar system. Sorry, yeah, that's sorry. What, to that's everyone. what I just fitted today. Yeah. Bus bus bars. Bus, but yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah I, I, had I, a good it, chat. We picked this. up. Uh, uh, shout out to Mainline Electronics picking me up for saying uh, buzz bar instead of bus bar. How do you pronounce it, Sam? Buzz bar. Straight. I've never met anybody who's pronounced it as bus bar. No one <laughs> I ever pronounced people it. Say, How do you pronounce this? They haven't got buzz bar. Buzz bar. No. Why wouldn't you call it a buzz bar? <laughs> I, 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 I feel know. like buzz bar makes way more sense. Uh, thank you. <laughs> I've been shouted out. So why aren't you saying it properly? I was like, well, I mumble most <laughs> yeah, of the time. I, so I, I think it as well. <laughs> I don't know. I I thought maybe it's just a Midlands thing or something, but I, I can't I can't find anybody who says bus bar. No one says bus bar. Could you imagine, like you're on site and you're like, oh, sorry, Bainline. Oh, I can't find that bus bar, and people will be looking at you like, what? What's that bus bar? You just I see my hand come across. Oh, shut up, yeah, man. Shut up, you div. But- yes, to answer your question, SBS, the dual bus bar thing, they're only available online, um, which is fine if I've got a job where I know what I'm putting in. I normally I do when I'm doing a CU change. I don't do many of them. And I've already done an EICR beforehand. I'm going back to isolators uh, for a moment. Um, you get some people and you probably get people in the comments saying, well, I spoke to my supplier, um, my energy provider, and they fit in an isolator for free. And that's another problem is that it's a, a lottery. You mm. can speak to your energy supplier and you might get through to someone who goes, oh, yeah, we'll come along and do that. And I'll stick it in free. And then again, you might get through to some call centre on the other side of the world who simply don't understand, despite all your protestations, what the problem is and what they need to be doing about it. And it is just a complete lottery as to you get some people who get them for free. Some people who like when Nick's pe- customers are paying 250 plus VAT or something for the same service. And it's it's a postcode lottery. Yeah. And that's that's all part of this whole fuse pulling problem there's no consistency there's no consistent charge um there's no just just there's no one way of doing it and what works for one person doesn't necessarily work for another and as electricians we're sort of caught in the middle going we just want to isolate the fucking thing so we can do our job that's all we want to do we just want to not die doing this job this legitimate job this legitimate work for our client that's all we want to fucking do and you've got the dno shouting at you and you've got uh, customers screaming at you about the price that you're charging and it's it's like well we're just sort of caught in a rock and a hard place and have been for years and why is nobody doing anything to resolve it and this is what fucks me off this is why i left the likes of eca with their we're we're always fighting for you for the industry it's like well why why are we looking at these things that never ever change and yet affect us daily in what we do it's madness the world's gone mad. I fucking hate it. I want to get off. Drives you to drink. <laughs> Do you want to hear something? Uh, I've got a uh, a naughty story about pulling the fuse. So back in the day, um, when I was doing my apprenticeship with this house, hang on, Sam. Thing. I feel because I watch so many podcasts now. I feel now when you just said this, I've got a bit. Of, you should put some background music on. A little bit of a. All swirling. On Radio One in the nineteen nineties, you remember? Yeah, the, so the, 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 the story, story going, thing. Sam. Watch on YouTube. Get me rid of. Get rid of me and Dave. Just have you full face on the screen and some music and oh, be lovely. What's wrong with Nick today? Production value. That's what we want, Sam. That's what the guys want. He's Nick wants to get something off his chest, and you're you're you're. No, he's not, not yet. I'm building. He's stifling my flow, man. Sorry, man. Sorry. So, um, cue the music. So we were doing these rewires. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to trigger myself on that one. I'm going to trigger myself, definitely. Um, but listen, so we was doing uh, these rewires, really crappy, get in there, get out rewires. And the guy I was working with, Alex, I won't say his surname, Alex, he, good spark, but really didn't care too much. He needed to charge his battery, but we'd pulled the fuse. Mm. No, we had uh, taken the fuse board out, and all he'd done was get a bit of twin and earth and a socket and plugged it straight into the head. <laughs> oh, I've seen uh, this before on TikTok yeah, and Instagram. I, I've seen that. They had a, an episode of Watchdog a few years ago where I was like, right, I'm doing a rogue electrician. Like, I'm sitting there with the popcorn. <laughs> and he did the same thing. He, he plugged the light bulb in <laughs> to the freaking head after he pulled the fuse out so that he could see it, see himself, see what he was working. I was like, fucking hell, mate, get a head torch. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Talk Jeez. about rolling the dice. <laughs> well, it happens, and the thing is, it will keep happening until someone gets seriously hurt. 
Which they probably have done, but we just yeah, don't know yeah, about. but who knows? I know. Who knows? Is it? I know. This is the thing. If you don't walk around with a camera strapped to your head 24-7, then you never hear these things. It just gets you know what they'll be saying next? Oh, we've got to wear body cams. Body cams Ooh. to change the fuse board. <laughs> it's fine. I do anyway, pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> I was filming mine today as well. I don't know if anything will ever come of it. But a uh, shout out to Simon Keel, who uh, got us on... Uh, uh, a, a really wild job uh, we've been filming the last five days and fucking hell it's been a ball breaker <laughs> Simon Thank Keel you. on Twitter Keel Electric you David that's me please buy a new camera the video you did at the unit oh, I was looking mate. forward to it and I was watching I was like why has he used a fucking potato to film this on yeah oh, mate honestly it's like using a camera from 1996 oh. When, when it's you part, of my, uh, part of my trademark is the what, um, giving everyone a headache. camera work no. from the low quality. Do you know what? Just get a 4K camera. Like, honestly. Yeah, I said to Dave, you can have one of my old GoPros. He's like, no, I like the rustic type. Dave has to wind his camera up for it to work. Uh, I do. The battery is kind of knackered in it. It is a 2008 camera. <laughs> Mate, just get a decent camera to do recording on. Nick... You had a rant that you wanted to go off on, you, a bit of a whinge. Yeah, right. So long story short, I had a phone call from a guy who watches me on YouTube and said, I'm doing an extension, I'm a builder, I'm doing an extension. Can you, the electrician's let us down last minute, can you come and just give us a quote and see what you can do? I said, yeah, sure, where are you? Thinking he was going to say bloody Sutton or London or Scotland. Next village along to me. I thought, sweet, no problem at you're, all. You're, you're going to badmouth him on here because he might No, 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 this. the builder... Really nice guy, really, really nice guy. So we went there that the next day, like a true to our word, went around, shook his hand, went around everything, checked it all. It was a really nice job that he'd done. It was an empty extension with a garage, ran through everything. We've got 20 down lights, we've got extractor fan, we've got 14, 15 double sockets, we've got outside sockets, we've got outside lights. Like it's a good chunk, it is. Um potentially change the fuse board if not i'm going to put a new cu in and come off the um kmf switch there was some fiddling around to do it was a good i would say if you put the whole job together it's probably four days worth of work i quoted 2700 pounds plus of that for it all because of material cost because of how many down lights there were i said to the builder roughly am i in the ballpark figure of the, the old spark because i don't want to go way too high but equally you know what it's like you don't say so short and he said you're within 100 pound of him I was like, oh, perfect, sound. So <clears throat> emailed the guy over to the customer. And I said, I can, I've can. i moved stuff around. I can come Wednesday, Thursday, because I know this needs doing because we're going to hold everything up. Already messaged the two jobs, moved it on for two weeks. No problem at all, Nick. To then that night, I was like, I've not heard anything from the guy. Can you just double check him? Yep, no problem at all. He said, yeah, just have a look. He'll get back to you tomorrow. Another day went past. I said, I haven't heard anything. This is three days coming now. I need to know if, unless I need to book other work in. Oh, he's just waiting on a quote from another guy. Oh, I was like, all right, okay. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's not the builder's fault at all. Yeah, no problem at all. I went on a quote. I said, yeah. So I ended up messaging the customer directly and said, listen, I need to know yes or no because I need to book work in. You know, it's, it's not fair on me. I've moved stuff around. I've got you a quote the same day that we said we'll turn up. And uh, he said, yeah, 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 I'm just going to give this other lad a chance. Just bear with me. I was like, all right, fair enough, whatever. So if you need me to knock the price down, we can change material costs. You know, we can do something to then get a text from him tonight when the job is tomorrow morning to say, sorry, mate, I'm going to go with the other guys. Come out a lot cheaper. Oh, yeah, you get a call. I know. Well, I'm just going to text by saying no problem at all. Like it is what it is. And I can always, I wanted to text him saying cheaper isn't always better. That's all I wanted to say to him. I'm not going to I'll say no problem at all. Best of luck with it all. You still got my. Uh, you, you should have just put your price in. That was your price. You should have said when they need to respond by in order to be able to secure your time. So and if it you was win it, them. you win it. If you don't, you don't. Well, if but it was to come to the last through, minute, yeah. If it was to come through a customer directly and they not know who I am, uh, and it was just like off Facebook or whatever, that's the way I would have gone down. But because it was through this guy who's a builder who wanted me to work there, who got me, you know, in on the job. I was trying to extend it out to help him because if this other Spartan now can't start for three weeks, it's just going to screw the builder up. So I was just trying to be a bit of nice for everyone and it's just shot me so badly in the foot. So and after this, I'm going to have to ring some customers up to get some work booked in for yeah, yeah. Wednesday, Thursday. So yeah, it really ticked me off, but it is what it is. These things happen, I know they do, and it won't be the last one. But yeah, it's uh, not cool, if I'm honest. I've got a double rant. 
I've got a double moan. Go on. CEF. Yes. Right. I'm not a fan. I like them. <laughs> so I'm not a fan of CEF, but I've been in there. Like, one thing they're good. Well, they are actually quite good, though. Mm. <laughs> this is such a weirdo. Yeah. Listen, they like they are quite good. They have good stock of cable. They have good like when you go into their store, they've always got it laid on. There's always a toilet in there. Joe, do, you know do you know what I mean? It's like they're a good wholesaler generally. I think that's a very good coffee machine. Stra- that's not Stratford London. That's Stratford upon Avon. You come to Stafford one, and you'll soon change your mind. Okay. Was it a docile? You go in there, you've got to wait 20 minutes before someone comes out and goes, I'll be right with you. Uh, you know what, that is... printer. Why do you still, pre- still print people's invoices off? Got and matrix printing, yeah. Give me a green sheet. <laughs> <laughs> but, I quite like it that. It drives me but insane. It, it, that that yeah, is one problem I like with CEF. Sorry, mate, but that, that is one problem, is that you, you stand there and you can hear them all talking shit and farting in the office at the yeah. back. And you're there going, I'm still at the counter here. And sometimes you're there for fucking 10 minutes before someone comes out and search it. Uh, but, but if you go to Eddie's and they're, they're all over you straight away. But uh, what can I say? They've got good parking. And the Stratford one's got a nice coffee like, machine. You two are like lovers. Oh, got great conversations. Listen, <laughs> I, I'm feeling triggered and ostracised right now. Um, but anyway, so I phoned up CEF the other day and I was like, right, I need this and this, this, this and this. If it's not going to be in tomorrow, let me know because I need it tomorrow. I can go elsewhere. Didn't let me know. Anyway, three days of ordering goes by. They messed up three orders. So I phoned up and I said, like, listen, you're free for free now. This is like doing my head in. And basically, he was like, well, why don't you order it all in one go? And then it won't be free and free. I was like, mate, how condescending. Can mm. you just not get the order right? And he was like, <laughs> and I was like, do you know what? There's a million wholesalers out there. I don't have to come to you. I just, you know, it's just convenient for me. He goes, you can go anywhere else you want, mate. In fact, it'd make me really happy if you went anywhere else. <laughs> no, I was like, what? <laughs> I think with any wholesale, it all depends on who you're dealing with on the counter. My local CEF, they're just a good bunch of blokes, to be honest. They're, they're all right. Um, uh, but I imagine that, you know, you can go to another branch and they could just be a complete arsehole. But that's the same with any wholesale. Yeah. Isn't? And I, I was about like, I was like, does he know who I am? <laughs> I'm going to phone your boss's boss boss. But in, the end, <laughs> like, in the end, I just had to, I just was like, whatever. But um, it's because it's, oh, I work for a company, so it don't really matter to me. I just use someone else and it make no difference. Yeah. Um, and then, like, I swore I'll never use them again. Three days later, I needed some cable urgently. And I knew around the corner, they'll have it. So uh, put in an order. Go to pick up um, CY cable, two core, uh, shielded cable. Um, it's bit, it's same as Belden, really. Um, so I go in there and I buy 100 metres and they go, oh, we've got to cut it, mate. So I'm okay with that, but I'm, I'm thinking, hope you put it on a drum, cut it and put it on a drum. They won't. 100 um, metres? Did it not I'm, come on a drum already in 100 metres? No, it come on a drum of 200 metres, whatever, right? So they come out with this, I don't know, must be two metre loop. And I looked at it and I thought, that's just going to be a problem. Anyway, get to site and I've got I've got about six hours left to wire this room uh, that's adjacent to... Basically, what I'm, what I'm doing is I'm wiring an x-ray room and the control room next to it. The x-ray rooms are like bunkers, so they only have one access point. It's not like you've got above the ceiling or anything like that because they're shielded because of x-rays and radiation, whatever. Anyway... I'm trying to get this cable through into a bit of trunking, down a pipe, through a bit of um, uh, Flexicon, but the metal stuff, um, and then get it into another one, pull it round, and I've got a labourer, and bless him, old Jerry, big shout out to Jerry. He's a wicked labourer, wicked labourer. But if you stress him out, he goes to pot. Anyway, so he's feeding in the cable. It's all gone wrong, and I go in there, and it's not his fault, it's my fault. And I go in there and the cable, so we've managed to pull in about 25 metres, just enough. And I go in there and the cable's on the floor and it's like this... Knotted. Chaos. It is chaos. And I, So today, like the floors had to go down um, last night, get all the floors prepped because the floors are being... So we had to put four mil ply down and, and then um, 
put the uh, vinyl over the top. So the vinyl was getting laid today. So I couldn't take it back out and start again. We didn't have time. Mate, it took me an hour and a half to unknot this cable. An hour and a half. I was sweating. I was, I was, in the end, I was sitting on the floor, sweating, thinking, I don't even know if this is even possible. It was like the ultimate puzzle. And all I, the I have the same problem every time I unzip my fly for a piss. Nightmare. Nightmare. <sighs> anyway. <You're sick. laughs> but yeah, so um, listen. Never buy cable off the drum. I swear, it, I just won't put it in. If it's Any more than the, 20 metres, it has to go on a drum. It has to. I've already turned into this knot of, knot of doom. Yeah, I've tried to show Adam before when um, you go back to real early videos when he first started. I had like 20 metres of armoured, six mil. And I said, yeah, mate, just unreal this down the garden when I was messing around with the camera to then look out at him just, and I can't even describe, I don't even know how he did it. The loops upon loops upon loops, when you pull it a certain amount, the loop then bends and it flicks itself over and creates yeah. another loop as it yeah. twists around. And I just looked at him and said, mate, you don't do it like that. I said, put it <laughs> one way and just hook it around like that, almost like you're unreeling it. And he got it straight away after. But it, that one moment he looked at him and was like, oh. So we ended up having to hold each end and just gently twist it to get, oh, mate, it was just a pain in the ass. But yeah. we've all been there. But that's one of the good things about them X boards that I've got. You know, the cable runner, but it's a, the spin spinning pad. You yes, can, I've got one. Yeah, you can the bigger versions you can put round um off cuts of cable on there and it'll pull it out for yeah, you. Yeah, I've seen that. I don't have that. Oh, my man. Yeah, it comes on the top. But thing is, mine's a little version, so you can't I've unless it's more than a well. I don't know eight hundred wide. You wouldn't fit on. I've got the big version as well. Oh, have you? At yeah. work? No. Yours? Yeah, it's mine. I, I've got set. Listen, shout out. This is to, now. Now that he's yeah. <laughs> Uh -huh. Shout out to Doncaster Cables. Uh, I was meant to do a video on it. I've never got round to it. Um, and I've stopped vlogging, really. I can't be asked. Um, send it, send me one and I'll do it, don't worry. Do they did send one? me the little one, to be fair. But the big one, I wouldn't really have much use. Because even with big drums of armoured, if I come on, I say big, you know what I mean, domestic-wise, we just take the top off and it sits on it and it copes with the load, no problem. Wait, hold on. Who makes it? Run Pro Tech. That's it. Run Pro Tech. Run Pro Tech. Um, honestly, they do a set of rods as well, and the rods are epic as well. Cool. They're so much better than um, other brands that are available. And Dave, as well, moving on from that, I'm halfway through watching your video on the stickers on the labels for the board, and I could not agree more of how pointless most of the stickers we put on a fuse board are. But I'm halfway through it. I'm trying to get through... The majority of swear words and, and it's a tough ah! wank, isn't it? it is. <laughs> Watching but the video there. about fucking stickers. It's a slow burner, but, but we'll get uh, there. yeah, I, I, my, my SBS board that went in today is going to be the first. Yeah, it's a real. So no, no one's seen David's video. It's sticker. about the um, last date of inspection uh, retest sticker. You know, the mixed colored sticker. It's just all a load of garbage because like Dave says in the video, you could come and have someone stick a sticker on the board in a rental. That's never done the test. But when someone moves in there and go, oh, it's been tested last month. It's okay for another 10 years. That's brilliant. But unless there's documentation, certification with it or anything, no one's none the wiser unless the estate agents have gone, right, here is the new EICR to prove that it's satisfactory. You know what's a hack for that though? Not a hack, but like what's coming is the QR scanner. I've got some downstairs. Yeah, so I've got some, some stickers here. A company sent me some the other day. Uh, so I'm gonna give them was a that go. Sirton? Yes. Yeah, yeah. I never I, heard I of them Boyd. before. I opened the box up and I was like, because they've sent me loads of old testers to give out, but I'm most of them are that old. I can't... Yeah, I'll show... It's a Robin. I forgot Robin was even a make. Do you remember the I old Robin, Robin up here. Aren't, yeah. Robin, aren't Robin called something else now? They're... Didn't they get taken over by Q-Tech? <laughs> I think they did. I think they are cute. They're either Q Tech or Dialogue, aren't they? Okay. Uh, well, Q Tech no, are private, aren't they? Nah. Yeah, yeah, that's what I've got up there. And then look at this one. That looks like it's served in the world. Look water. at that. Oh, that's amazing. That's marvellous. You can't moan at that. Oh, Nick. Do you say marvellous? I've got loads of Come on. Come on, that is marvellous. That's marvellous. 
I've got that one. I've got this one. They sent me an old Robin Hoy meter. Why are they wasting these wonderful things on some youth who can't appreciate? How much do you want, how badly do you want an RCD beauty? tester? Oh, oh. How so badly would you like that collection right now, David? Oh, that, that's just that is lovely stuff. Lovely stuff. Last calibrated September two thousand and seven. Installation battery tester. Yeah, yeah. I think my old Robin that even beats that in terms of uh, calibration. Calibration, first of Feb two thousand and five. The stick has worn off it, but uh, the year begins with a nine. <laughs> <laughs> this one, this seaward one. First of February uh, nineteen ninety something. Last calibrated. I did see it the other day. Where was the sticker? It said 19... Where it is? Last calibrated, the 31st of the 3rd, 1999. Wow. No, that, that is ace. What is it? What does it do? It's a C-word. Oh, it's got a RS-232. Uh, what's it? Each doesn't even know. Test, I bet you've never even heard of RS-232. For the listeners, hold on. For the listeners, Nick has been sent a load of old testers um, to give away... But I'm pretty. Like, they're too they're old to give cool up. Looking. They were meant to be for apprentices, but then these won't work. Like I can't give these away. But this is a multifunctional tester, so continuity, installation, resistance, earth loop impedance. But and it RCD still testers. does all the things that it that your, your modern MFT and does. Look, just it's because little... it's got an RS two three two instead of a USB or Bluetooth interface. Very cool, Excellent. Dave. Do you want this? Yes. Anyway. Back to it. Yeah, so. so this is what I was saying with Dave's um, video is realistically, there's no way for a uh, homeowner or someone renting to find out if there's, you know, a lot of reliable stickers on the board. I always fit stickers on boards with my name on my business address, like blah, 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 all that sort of stuff. But the stuff that you actually have to stick on a fusible that is in the regs book doesn't really give you any useful information, especially for people that aren't in the industry and can read it the way we read it. So David's come up with his own sticker, which simplifies it. It's got all the correct information on it. It has a little tick box. So if it's a new DB, it's a tick box. If it's a rewire, partial rewire, or a new circuit, you can tick it of what's happened. Because like Dave says as well, if we were to add a new circuit in the board, we normally would have to stick one of these new stickers on anyway. So you could end up with one saying, tested, inspected, let's say today's date, retest in 10 years. But then another sticker that's backdated two years, and you can't differentiate differentiate the two between them on the board. But doesn't doesn't these QR code companies like that store the, all the information? Doesn't that sort of um, like get rid of that problem? Like yeah, you, there, there yeah, are some very good comments that came in on that video. Uh, a lot of people um, proponents of QR codes because it should be like your service history on your car. It should be something that you know you you want to collect. Big log for. To, to show that over the time that you've had the most expensive asset you'll ever purchase, that you've maintained it and looked after it and serviced it. And when it comes time to hand it over, that, you know, you've, you've got all this, this history, this information. Uh, it always amazes me the amount of people who sell their homes without an ICR. And, and sometimes we get um, called in on the, uh, the hostile ones, which about a year ago we said we weren't going to do anymore, actually, because we had a couple of... Uh, interesting experiences with them where the buyer appoints us to do an EICR in a house that the seller is still living in. Mm. And they don't really want a couple of hairy ass ugly guys shuffling through all their sockets and switches. Uh, and they think that we're just there to try and find fault to fiddle with it. Yeah. Yeah. Bung the price down and, and make work for ourselves. And we're not, we're just there to come up with an honest assessment of the place. But you look at it and you think, well, you cheap bastard. If you were selling your car, you wouldn't sell it without the MOT. You would yeah. go on, yes, we want you to buy this car, but we're pissed off that you've got the AA inspector to come and give it a once over because it's got no MOT. It's so like, well, why, why do you expect something different from selling your house? Yeah. So I don't it's know. A great it's, way of putting it. it, it, it it's, it's bizarre, isn't it? It's just, yeah, I want top dollar for this massive asset that I've got, this really high value asset. Uh, but uh, I've got no no information to show how it's been looked after over the it, years. And something I something called the homeowners information pack, the hip those hip things. Yeah, they didn't last very long. Were they? They brought really, that was labour, wasn't it? Wasn't that before? Even that must have been about ten years no ago. Idea the old about hip this. stuff. 
Yeah, so if you had to, if you wanted to sell your house, you had to have a a, a pack with all this information in, and then. I think something happened with the economy and they like, yeah, get rid of them. We need yeah. to get houses moving. The trouble with those sort of things, any government scheme like that, is you get these companies that set up going, oh, we'll do that, we'll do that. And uh, they do it to the cheapest, shittiest, shoddiest way possible. Like Just your, yeah, like your OZEV installs and like your PV installs. It's and like your um, EPCs. It's all, it's, it's just hiring a bunch of clueless people for the most part and get them to knock them out hard and fast so that someone at the top can make a load of money. And you just end up with a load of rubbish on paper. It doesn't really help anything. So I don't know what the answer is. But uh... Question for you then. So I've had, a, I've had a message from someone. And if you were buying a house, you were in the industry, and you were buying a house off someone who is an electrician, would you take their EICR that they've done themselves on their house? At no. No. They always say that a builder's house is the worst kind of house you could buy. Yes, it is. I don't know, mate, because like everything else, it all depends on the diligence and experience and, well, the, the person who's performed the work. I mean, I've done... And Have you done any... Has anyone done any RCR in their house? I've done any RCR in mine when I put my AFDDs in. And, yeah, uh, so I, I did mine. brutally honest with myself. And, I did mine when I changed my board over recently. Yeah, well, it's in my interest to know what the pitfalls are here. What what possibly is dangerous? What needs attention? What, what do I need to know about? And it, if there is something that I think, oh, that's not right, obviously I'm going to fucking fix it. But not everyone's the same. Yeah, I mean, not. you've got your new favourite boy, Jamie Blake Sparky, care. who's put his, uh, his installation on Twitter, <laughs> which uh, he, by his own admission, uh, is shite. And it's Who not has? his work, but it's just just awful. Uh, Jamie Blatant Sparky. Uh, oh, yeah. Jamie, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, so uh, you know there, there are there are electricians who who look at their own installations and go, yeah, that's pretty awful. I recognise that's pretty awful, but uh. well, I I lived in my house with an old fuse board for six years until I've recently changed it. I'm not going to do any of the electrics in my house. I can't be asked. Hmm. I ain't going home to do electrics. No way. I was, like I told the story the other week about how I pulled the I got I got angry with the extension lead and pulled it out the out the socket in the kitchen and broke the socket. The socket still broke. So I'm fixed it. See, I will see there's an issue and want to fix it. But being a spark as well, when people's houses are like, yeah, we've got to cut this bit of the wall out, we'll put some filler on it. No problem at all, Nick. But when I want to do it in my house, I want to do the electrics, but I'm like, because eh, I know for a fact I put some filler on it and it'll stay like that for years. We, had, we bought like this um uh what you call them canopy for the cats to like they they would like to stand on the cupboards and we thought we'll buy this little sling for the cats to sleep on it lasts Pussy sling i can't remember what it's called um right, hammock, in your kitchen, hammock. Though, bruv. yeah but we'll buy a hammock and that lasted two days and my daughter went <clears throat> and pulled it off the wall Hold on, you put your catches your your cats sleep in your kitchen bruv i'm never eating at your house in the lounge, in the wall, in the cupboard, oh, I'll let you off. Got in the in the lounge. My daughter hung off it. She stood on the poof and then dragged it off the wall. I was like, "Well, I'm not putting that back up. Put some filler over it." And that was about a year ago, and I've just got to fill of this thick hanging out the lounge wall still. Yeah, yeah plus no, I kitchen... do find that with DIY is that sometimes you know you do ninety five percent of it, and it's that last five percent which you know if you just put in an extra half hour doing a bit of sanding and touching yeah. it with the painting would see it right, but you're there again. <sighs> Put a picture just, over it. And, and in the end, you just start living with it and you don't notice anymore. My wife's asked me to put up a, a curtain pole for like the last three weeks and I've had plenty of opportunity to do it. I just think, I can't be asked. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I never tough. have Adam at my house to go and get the Hoover out of the van for me. So I'm like, <laughs> but it's a good question. Would you accept an EICR off an electrician, uh, off an electrician whose ass it is? Personally, I don't care. But... I, if, if I was if gun to my, gun to my head, I'd say no because yeah, I'd say no. So I think I I think I've got the right. task. I think I've got the task to go and do an EICR at this guy's house who is an electrician. <laughs> well, yeah, I suppose you've got to remember that if if the per, if that guy has, has signed off the EICR, um, they're accepting the liability for the electrical safety of the installation at that time. So what, what, it's I not know. something you ought to accept lightly. And I know I appreciate they think, well, you know, uh, I know there's a couple of things wrong here, but I'm going to let them slide so that I can just tick this off. But uh, on your head be it. Personally, I wouldn't. 
how many times has anyone ever been kicked off, kicked out of one of the CPSs? No, I've never or, known anyone. For Unless someone's snide, injured snide or died ASIA. or there's a big fire, no one gets into trouble. That's what I'm saying. So, all oh, right, he's given a dodgy ICR. Oh, I don't know, there's a few faults in it that get flagged up. Is another electrician going to report him to to uh, to the CPS? And if they do, what are the CPS going to do? I can't imagine they do anything. because no, I, 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 As someone who has reported to... someone to a CPS before, I can tell you they do fuck all. That's what I'm saying. No, they just go, oh, do you want to go and fix it? And the guy goes, yeah, I'll get around to it. And then that's the end of it. Yeah. Well, the, the, the rewire I did... Um, when I rewired a house that had just been rewired, they got reported to NIC and they ended up forking back way, I think it was three grand or something like that, back to the homeowner to cover oh, they out. Actually, well, that, that's a result. You got somewhere then yeah. in that case. Yeah, but he he obviously wasn't very happy about it. Whether or not he saw my video or not, it was one of them, take the chances of... Uh, do, you just... think they, do you think they, they actually did something because it's you? No, 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 nothing to do with me. They didn't know I would, no, the NIC didn't know I was getting involved at all. Oh. What I'm saying is they went out, assessed it, and they went, not very good. But obviously I then went there to do a quote on it and pulled things apart a bit more. I went through the loft. I went in the garage loft, looked at the way some things were terminated. We had a few floorboards up, and we were like, yeah, that is bad, um, which had been fixed with a couple of days. But the homeowner was like, I just want to rewire again. So, it, uh, yeah, he got some money back out of it. Um, obviously, he was out of pocket at the end of the day after paying me. Didn't get all his money back from the other guys. But, hey, like I say, he can sleep safe at the end of the night with his kids in there knowing it's it's been done properly this time. Uh, you got a better result than I got when I reported my guy because I yeah. absolutely went nowhere. But like I say, I didn't report him. It was already, so he already had his money back when he did it and then spoke to me. So, yeah, I don't know if I'd go down the route of reporting someone. I think I'd rather just make sure that person's safe house we go to. I think it depends how bad it is. Do you know what I mean? Like, if it's like a proper dog's dinner, yeah, then like, and they took a rank liberty and it's someone vulnerable, I think I would. But, but I'd probably I phone from Sparks from, from reporting someone. I was like, well, I, and I understand that in that people think, well, who am I to judge someone else's work? But when you come across something that's just fucking dangerous and the, the client's clearly been ripped off and they're upset and you're the one sort of there trying to think, well, I can put it right, but it's going to cost you more again because you're going to be paying me now. Yeah. You, you kind of hope that with all this workmanship warranty bollocks that they all tout, that they would stick their hands in their pockets and do something about it, but they don't necessarily. I think when it comes to reporting people as well, I don't feel I've got, I've earned the right to do it. But I think some would agree about anyone to go and rip someone's work apart and report them. It's you, Dave. You know it through and through. You know the book. You know your regs. And I think, well, hand on heart, if you think you've done a good job, let Dave Savory test it. Let's <laughs> shoot himself. Well, no, I mean, I'm no better or worse than, than uh, there are a lot of people better than I am. But it's, it's you know, it's, it's one of those things where you can see where there's bad workmanship and yep. where things don't comply and where things are truly shocking, so literally and figuratively. I'd love to organise is a um, like a brain off against Mark and Dave Osavo. I thought you were going to say me then. No, <laughs> no, no. Like, I think I think your level would be um, probably someone like me. <laughs> no, probably oh, better than me. Speaking of Mark, sorry Sam, are you still going? Sorry. No, why don't you just talk over me? You've been doing okay. It then thank you. I will. Uh, speaking of Mark, uh, I was on the phone to Mark earlier and me and Adam, Adam and I, as people like to know, are going up north, up to north above Welcome, Leeds. Welcome, by the way. Thank you, Dave. And um, oh, come on, Sam, I'll just say trigger leave if you read one more time. <laughs> and uh, thank you, Sam. Well, yeah, no, we're I, do some I'm work. just taking credit for it. There's, I've actually got nothing to do with it. Oh, brilliant. Right, cool. Um, we're going to do some EV charges. Adam's going to do a three-phase board, some containment uh, for two days. So, it's going to be wicked. It genuinely yeah, is. Yeah, and do you know what? It's a great... So I know Mark spoke to me about this um, and he said, like, I've, I've invited Nick up and that. Um, do you mind? And I was like, listen, I know Nick's my, like, my bitch, but, you know, sometimes I lend him out. But one of the great things is... <laughs> one of the great things is um, Adam can, like, fill up his portfolio with pictures. Yeah, I spoke to him earlier on the phone and he was like, yeah, absolutely. I was like, I know, right? 
It's and it's in, a, it's in a high-end sports car shop. Yeah, so Lambos, every, there's yeah, loads of stuff there. McLaren's a lot. Yeah. So it, it's a wicked project. And, and this is something that, again, <laughs> I think Mark, uh, Mark and Neil come under fire this week. And I, I know they probably won't appreciate me talking about Gunnar anyway. They come under fire because um, we all know a chap called Craig Boost um, from Walthamstow College. I know no idea. Yeah, he's a good bloke, isn't he? Really good bloke. Um, so he got kicked out of the Sparky Ninja Group. Oh, and did he? And there's uh, great speculation that is because of he he done a, a podcast with Neil and Mark. And like so there's a, a load of politicking going on around it. But what I'd like to say on that is um, look at Mark's body of work like what he's doing and like he genuinely genuinely helps people like he he phoned you yeah he was like oh i've got a good job that i think nick and it's a win-win you come down you do a bit of content sit in a car do do some chatting um you've got adam being able to fill up his portfolio and he's like yeah i just had this idea and i thought i'd bring them down adam gets to do his portfolio nick gets to do a bit of content and it's a win-win situation for everyone and i was like do you know what I mean? Like, who thinks like that? Who thinks that charitably all the time? Yeah. On top of that, he's also he's also got nearly a thousand apprentices work during COVID. Like, Which is crazy. Crazy. No one else has done that. No. And it's like, he walks a walk. He don't just say, oh, I'm the greatest thing since life spread for the electrical industry. I don't think he, he does say that. <laughs> he never says that. Uh, but he walks a walk. There's others out there that like blow smoke up their own ass and whatever. Mark walks a walk. He's done I've, so I've much. I've got a lot of respect for Mark. Just to say this is Mark Allenson for anybody who doesn't know him. You're going to put his link in the show notes, aren't you? Apprentice one to one. Yeah, apprentice one to one. Because you, you always it... say you're going to put stuff in the show notes, and you never <laughs> to say do, that. Sam. Hey, so I've got so much link it. to Mark because he so deserves it. <laughs> hey, listen, wait until you see the show notes. And I if actually... Sam doesn't put it in, everyone in the comments, please let Sam know if he's missed it. All right, listen, they'll be in. And I'll yeah. tell you why they'll be in. Because I've done some really good show notes for this episode. Oh, yeah. I've already written them. So I've only just got to add a little bit of this and that in. And I just, um, yeah, I hope you guys appreciate the show notes. That's all I'll say. Sure they will. Most people no, don't. No, I hope you them. two appreciate the show notes. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I can't wait to see them. Yeah. All over it. Yeah. Rude. Listen, Monday Club, we're out. <laughs>